right, let's crack on then. So first ditch dispatch topic of today uh, is date and time on the internet. So yeah, I'll be driving the slides for you, but if you just, I think, add yourself to the queue and then we can get talking. Hello, am I audible to everyone? I hope I am. Yeah, you, you are, you're a bit quiet, but I can hear you. Uh, that might be my headphones. And right, yeah. I've requested a screen share. Wait, I can, uh, would you work the slides or can I'll I share the slides screen? for you, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, and let's talk about date and time on the internet. I'm Ujwal. I work at this consultancy called Igalia. And if you find that, uh, easier to pronounce, you can call me Riza Kukin. So let's, can you progress the slides, please? Okay, so before we ask, uh, I am a member and a dev at Epinet uh, the, the committee that is tasked with standardizing JavaScript, and there's a bunch of cool people uh, who well, the, the audio just got very strange. Um, I don't know if you changed something when I advance the slide. Uh, is this better? No, it's still quite distorted. Okay, it's now silent. I don't know if you're expecting to be. Me echo suggests that might be a broken mic. I did a test call with him a couple of hours ago, and it worked fine in Jitsi, but that doesn't mean anything. Well, excuse well, me. Okay, what about now? Much better. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so specifically inside of TC39, I'm a part of the Temporal Champions Group, which is a group that has been tasked specifically with standardizing an update to the JavaScript data object, which is a a constant pain point so we've been working on a modern ergonomic api for building data and time applications on the internet and there's a bunch of really cool people in this subgroup as well uh would you uh progress the slides okay so what is so special about temporal uh i am a little biased maybe you could say but we have come upon something which is a modern ergonomic api it addresses some of the long-standing weaknesses and we use 339 as the base interchange format for the different uh, uh, objects that we use. We also have first class time zone support and first class calendar support for the different uh, APIs, which is, is something of a first in our space, uh, which means that now we have different objects which have time zones and calendars inside of the data model. And then you could ask, well, how does one persist that? How does one persist? a time zone that is attached to a date time or a timestamp. Uh, could you please uh, progress the slides? Okay, so this is the standard uh, timestamp as one might expect according to 3D39. Uh, and if you progress the slides, you would see that the time zone conundrum is, is a special one. It's a special one because fortunately or unfortunately, we are not the first people, first group of people to, to come upon this problem. Uh, 339 and uh, the underlying ISO standard, 8601, allows absolute offset from UTC, but many applications all over the internet uh, work in the context of what one may call a human time zone. Uh, and of course, you need to encode the timestamp for persistent or uh, for persistence or for interchange inside a database or to just round trip across clients. And, and you could ask, well, what is a human time zone? 
is it a time zone that is that is included in the list of time zones by Anna, or is it uh, as specified by Unicode? And well, the group of people that came across the, this problem includes people from uh, de developing applications all over, right? There's Java, which built a similar API. There's Linux tools like Date. There's databases, and then there's calendar applications. So if you progress the slides, you would see that now uh, it's common even on the internet to come across a time zone quite like this. Now it's my local time zone, but you could see that uh, apart from the time zone, there's a suffix that that includes a, uh, an identifier for my time zone. If you progress the slides, there is uh, another variant which includes the IANA time zone. And the next one would be uh, this. And this is, I, I believe, uh, a format that is quite popular at this point. Now, the previous ones are uh, especially popular in the database spaces. But this is something that I feel many people have encountered in the wild, even though it is something that is not in the standards track. So if you move ahead, uh, the question is, are we done? And the answer is, unfortunately, not quite. This format, first of all, was never standardized. Uh, Java or, or uh, whoever uh, first came across this uh, just just move ahead with this without ever sanitizing it. And of course, one of the big problems is that there's so much more information that can be encoded. For us specifically in, temp in, in temporal, calendars are a big priority. So we need calendars for uh, all of these things, I'm sorry. Uh, and what else? Uh, we can have CLDR time zones. We can have different numbering systems. Uh, we can even have time scales. So, there is, in fact, a need for a generalized format that that is uh, that provides people a way to uh, form uh, to format extensions in a way that that is agreed upon and generalized instead of just just coming up with ad hoc designs that don't play along well with each other possibly. And there's also a need for a process to specify these keys that these different uh, information uh, pieces of information that can be added and the list of acceptable values so if you move ahead uh this is something close to what we came upon i changed the time in the uh okay so on the left you would see uh what we usually see but towards the end there's uh another piece of information and this is a tag that includes a more generalized form of including any information in, in the timestamp. So moving ahead, we could see that uh, Temporal could utilize this format to, to have its own extended version of 3339 strings. And so we can, we can use this to uh, express what the calendar is like, but uh, uh, hypothetically, uh, sorry, ideally one could use this to uh, include any information. So if you move ahead, uh, yeah, so this is uh, a link back to the, to the draft that I came up with. Uh, we tried as TC39 to share observations with IETF to, to upstream, one could say, this format to the standards track. Uh, we, Tried to keep folks from CalConnect, which is the liaison for ISO, in the loop. Uh, the goal was to standardize generalized and optional extensions, as well as modernize 339, uh, which has uh, uh, gone out of sync, one could say, with the underlying ISO 8601, with things like extended year syntax, and also deprecating the uh, fallback that allows two or three digits years. Uh, we we're trying to also standardize a mechanism for registering these keys, quite similar to how uh, BCP47 does. And we've been working simultaneously with Unicode folks for uh, uh, coming up with a U namespace for these things, so that you know time zones as well as uh, calendars as specified by the Unicode consortium could work. Uh, moving ahead, we... Uh, the, the question now is how do we move ahead with this, right? Uh, we brought our findings to the Calix working group 
as well as CalConnect, uh, which happen to be the two uh, sort of big bodies that deal with these these changes in this space, right? We authored a draft, which with the express goal of obsoleting 3239 with these optional extensions. So uh, of course, everything that is accepted right now is, is still accepted. Uh, and we included updates uh, with these optional extensions. Uh, there was some pushback, uh, understandably, to obsoleting 3239. And so now I've tried to split the updates into another draft so that that could be accepted uh, individually, and then uh, these extensions could live on as an add-on. Uh, the question that now we're grappling with is, can both be accepted? And if they can, then, then by which working group specifically? And do we even have a working group uh, that, that deals with this, or do we need a new one? And that said, uh, if you progress to the next slide, Thank you for having me here. That's it. That's great. Thank you um, for your presentation. So we've got time now for discussion. Um, I've seen there's a lot of Java chat going on. Any kind of, if we focus on the dispatch questions here as well, do we think this work is um, valuable, belongs in the IETF, and where would it go? Where should it go? So I can see I've got Pete in the queue. Off you go. We have to see if all this stuff works. Yes, uh, morning. Uh, so first, one quick question, which is, um, does anybody have a sense of what Calex thought of this? Like, wh which, what direction did the discussion go in there? My personal impression was that it was really positive, but I think Ron can add more to that. Yeah, as Calex chair, I'll pop in uh, to comment on that. Assuming you can hear me, it's telling me attention. Uh, we're not detecting audio, but I think that's because I wasn't talking to start off with. Thanks, uh, Signal. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, positive to the idea with some caveats of this is complex. We probably want to spend some time talking about it, but very negative to the idea of obsoleting RFC 3339 and defining a complete format that included everything. So the idea is, yes, we can do this work, but let's leave 3339 by itself so that places where there's just a timestamp time with, with, with nothing else, nothing else uh, can stay, uh, can stay at, like, at, that. like that. Okay, and, and so that brings me to question two, which is, can you give an example of where such a thing would be used to express a time? I understand for calendars, like expressing ongoing things and... and uh, you know, that, that makes sense. But for expressing a single time, why is it important to mention the locality beyond to, the to, to maintain the context with it. with it? So if a, so if a, if a time, time came, came from came. somewhere, it, it was within a particular calendar system when it was generated, maintaining that context allows you to know this was a time in like, it happened at 9am context, rather than it happened so, at so you might be hanging 9 on to the, in plus you 10. might be looking back at something and saying yeah and want to retain that context, context through, through whatever, else, whatever you're else you're doing okay no that works for me thanks okay Carlston, you're next in the queue yes thank you um, so in, in the Jabber room, I already pointed out that uh, in, in the CBO working group, with, which is actually meeting in the next slot, um, we have a, a draft uh, defining a CBO tag for time. Now, CBO already has two tags for time, one for RFC 339 times and one for POSIX uh, times. Uh, but it has turned out that we, we need more detail in time. So there, there is a time tag 1001 that defines a few more uh, properties of times and, and that is uh, now growing a bit according to requirements that other uh, people have. Um, so in essence, what, what's happening is that uh, we are defining a little information model uh, for time. And I'm wondering uh, how we can make sure that, that what we define actually works well with what other people are doing in this space. So we would be very interested in, in making sure this, this is all well uh, coordinated. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I'm all up for coordination. I think we could uh, uh, touch base once this session is over and we could discuss that. Okay, thanks. Um, Daniel, you're next in the queue. DKG, can't hear you. I can see you, <laughs> but no audio. I'll give you a sec. If nothing else, folks, this is a good time to test out your audio so you can join the queue with questions. We're just getting background noise now. DKG still can't hear still can't you. Hear. Sorry. Shall I skip ahead and just get Harold for a second? I think you were just going to ask what was in the Java chat, right? So I can relay it for you. Was um, you said you don't understand what the recipient calendaring system should do if it sees a conflicting UTC offset and IANA label. So I guess that's the question you were going to ask. Um, it, uh, I was focusing on Meet Echo, but I could just jump on Jabber Chat in a second and answer that. That's okay. Yeah, or answer the question now if you have immediate thoughts on it. To read up uh, on the message, but let me just give me a second. About the the uh, I am the time zones changing over time. If I'm correct. It's just if the recipient calendaring system has a con conflict with the UTC offset and the IANA label, do you know oh, what it should do? I see. Yeah, uh, the the UTC offset is a uh, is is supposed to be the source of truth in those matters. The uh, the labels and and any additional information is uh, something that can be used by the client to. Uh, implementation you could say to you to process additional information right additional context but it's not uh necessary to take those into account and and maybe there'd be a bunch of implementations that don't even care about them right uh if they're not doing any localization or uh, uh if they're, they're not dealing directly with any humans if they're doing timestamps or things like that Cool, thank you. We've got a couple more in the queue. So, um, Harold, you next. So, uh, the, I glanced through the document, and one of the things that uh, I wondered about was you import wholesale the extension space of uh, BCP 47 single character labels. And why? Why do you want all that crap? I see why I could want X, but uh, why all the why do you import the whole thing? I think we might have been biased initially because we were in talks with the Unicode folks who authored BCP forty seven. I was mostly looking for an extensible way to generalize this format without having to uh, write down as part of the RSC uh, the different key values that are acceptable. And, and I thought it would be really hard to add to that set if if one had to uh, do a new RFC every time. So that was the mechanism that was uh, suggested to us as a way to make it low overhead to introduce new uh, new new pieces of information. But I'd be happy to replace that with something which is uh, maybe uh, of a lower overhead or something like that. I would uh, possibly argue the opposite, that uh, the overhead of uh, defining new stuff is far too low when you use that mechanism. And uh, that, uh, that uh, the risk you have is that people start using crap that, or stuff that has been registered in that namespace without even bothering to tell you how it's supposed to inter be interpreted in it in the context of uh, dates. I mean, if you want interoperability, you don't want the bar to be low. 
I see. I just want to check here because um, I'd be keen to kind of focus on the dispatch questions here. So we, we might be getting just a bit more into the detail of the the work. So if um, I'd encourage people to come to the queue, we've just got a couple of minutes left on the agenda. It's very packed today. So um, I've, I can see some Java chats on opinions on the dispatch questions. So how do we move ahead with this work? It sounds like there's at least interest in it. So um, keen to hear views from participants on what we do with the dispatch the dispatch question. Harold, if you have a view on that, that that'd be great. Otherwise, I'll move on in the queue. I think we need to need to have careful consideration. So I'd support a working group. I think it needs more consideration than AD sponsored will bring. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, you're next in the queue. Yeah, I, I partly would just want to agree with what Harold said because I didn't know he was going to say it. Uh, but this uh, this involves enough complexity that it uh, it likely needs a working group. And to add one piece, one more piece of complexity to the list, which may motivate the working group for the idea further, uh, I'm a little getting a little worried about a different time synchronization problem, which is a uh, IETF standard, possibly with different sets of definitions and namespaces, and an ECMA standard, and a JavaScript standard, a Java standard, and uh, uh, and an ISO standard. And if they are uh, if they are all different, or even several of them are different, we end up in a very strange, very space sometimes referred to as uh, as the nice thing about standards is there's so many things, so many of them to choose from. And we really don't want to go there if we can avoid it. Thank you. The idea is uh, for us in ECMAScript to to put this, uh, to, to uh, try to get this into IETF in uh, whichever way is most acceptable to IETF folks, and then change the format that we are using to that, and also normatively reference that uh, IETF standard uh, so that we don't have to actually maintain this this ad hoc standard. Well, that 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 sounds like a perfectly good idea, except that ECMAScript is not the international standard. Uh, the ISO document is the international standard, and I'm uh, I'm concerned, as I said in the chat, that you're not coordinating with ISO. Okay. Uh, we we don't need to resolve this now, but it but it is an argument for a working group rather than a small cluster of people. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, sorry, I'm going to cut it here because we do have a really full thing today. I'm seeing people posting on Jabber, um, kind of a general agreement that uh, a, a working group is what's needed, but we'll take a final decision on the list. I'm also conscious that um, Patrick's not here, so I'd be keen to obviously make the decision with my co-chair as well. So we'll just. Um, so thank you at this time for your presentation. We'll take it to the list. And I think there is also a, a sort of mini charter for this. Um, so I'd encourage folks to head over to the list. Um, the link to the messages is in the agenda and just kind of read through and see if that seems like it a buff would be the next most appropriate step. Okay. Thank you, Mijoel. Okay. So